Hi, I'm CJ Altenberg with TransWest Truck Trailer RV in Frederick, Colorado. We appreciate you tuning in. If you are in the market for a big trainer trailer, we have a absolutely loaded eight horse sitting behind me. Now, unfortunately, this one's already sold, but this is something that we build pretty regularly. Uh, we can custom these trailers. If, if you wanna make some type of other options to them, completely customize them to fit in your needs, we can build these type of trailers. So we're gonna give you a full walkthrough on this one. There is a lot on this trailer, so buckle up, we'll walk you through it. It is a 2023 Cimarron North Star eight horse triple axle air ride. Let's go ahead and take a look at the drawing. I'll point out a couple things that we're looking at on this trailer. Length on this one, floor length is 36 foot. We're eight foot wide. We're seven four tall, so we have some extra width and extra height. Now we've got a lot going on in the tack areas. So we have a front dressing room on passenger side. Directly behind that is gonna be a hay room. On driver's side is gonna be a trainer tack setup. And again, it's a triple axle. Now one other thing you'll notice is, is standard on those stalls is 39 inches. This one's gonna be 36. And then the normal offset is a four foot offset. This is gonna be a two foot offset on these stalls and then also on the tack walls. So what we're trying to do is we're really trying to condense eight horses and a lot of tack on a smaller floor uh, length type of a trailer. Now, again, this has got a lot on it. So bear with us as we walk you through this. Let's just go ahead and start. Uh, all aluminum construction on these Cimarron's. The best floor in the market, they're four inch centers. It's a 12 inch deck board, it's ex an extruded piece that locks in tongue and groove high and low. So there's two points to actually lock into. Imagine the hoof size of a horse, wherever they're standing on this trailer, they're standing on a support beam. So compared to other trailers out there in the market, just literally peek underneath the floors and you'll start to see those centers, those beams that run across spread out. Best floor on the market, like I mentioned, eight year structure warranty, three year hardware. So they really stand behind the product itself. Underneath the gooseneck here, you're gonna notice, since this is a big trailer, we're gonna have a lot of tack, a lot of weight on this trailer, even when we get to a show, get home, unhook it. So we put dual jacks underneath it. Again, 36 foot on the floor, but again, this width and this length and the capability that we can you know, actually put on this trailer, you know, we want those dual jacks. The other great thing about that is, is if you go to back up underneath this trailer, and maybe you're not a perfectly square underneath this, you can actually manipulate, because they're on individual switches, you can actually walk a trailer onto the ball, you know, if it's off just a hair. If it's off a lot, you know, you just gotta have another shot at it. But you'll notice big spare underneath here. We'll talk about those wheels and tires in a little bit. Battery box. There's also a battery disconnect up here. So if we need to, we can kill power to this trailer. So that's a great little feature at the end of it. When you go to unhook it, you just reach up here, turn that off and walk away from the trailer. So if you bump a manger light, leave a tack light on, we're not gonna drain the battery and then come to a trailer that's dead trying to get it onto a truck. Now this equalizer system does have a manual override. So if you are in an emergency situation or dead battery, you need to get this on or off the truck, you can do that. The other thing on this trailer is the fact that it has an air ride system. Like I mentioned, it is a triple axle air ride, but this is the compressor right here. It's all self-contained, very simple to use. It's on off, it's raise and lower. We have this one currently on and in the raise position. And we'll talk more about that air ride system and some other features on this trailer, the way we have it equipped. Now, we did mention it's got a lot of different tack on this trailer. First and foremost is this front dressing room. So in this front dressing room, pretty basic, but if you're gonna be carrying a lot of extra clothes with you, some totes, anything like that, you've got the capability to do it. You see this massively, I mean, the entire length of the gooseneck clothes bar over here to the left you know, we could always go in and add another one for you if you need an additional, uh, but that way you can carry a lot of those items with you. Everything's carpeted in here, except the floor that I'll show you here in a minute. 
but that way, if you have anything, you know, it's not rubbing on aluminum, it's not also creating a lot of noise. You've got this boot box right here, so it works as a great step going up into that uh, gooseneck area. It's 18 inches, so it's really deep, uh, but again, works as a step, additional storage for you. And then behind me, and then on the back wall, you have all these hooks. These are aluminum powder coated hooks here, so they're really strong, really stout. This is a design that Cimarron came up with. If you're used to some of those older trailers, you know, the, the bridle hooks were, you know, not very tall, not very deep off the wall, and were really close together. We understand we want to hang a lot of items on these. So they made these pieces to where they're a lot taller, a lot deeper off the wall itself. And again, they're powder coated to protect them. And then on this floor, this is a gray rubber mat. You're going to start seeing this a lot more on our inventory trailers. We've, we've been putting it on some trailers periodically. Uh, we really like it. It's really easy to clean. It's not like it's a mat where stuff can still get underneath it. Um, it's not carpet on the floor where you're going to be walking. And, you know, over time, it kind of gets that, that musty smell. And it's hard to really get any type of stains out of it. So, again, we're starting to incorporate that. You also have this fold up step right here. Again, we have this trailer aired up right now. So it goes up about two and a half inches when we air this trailer up. So when we lower it, and I do recommend that when you're loading horses, loading tack, let's have this trailer lowered. Cause again, everything's two and a half inches lower to the ground. You know, steps aren't as big, ramps aren't as steep. So always keep that in mind on your air ride trailers. But these, these steps, we incorporate them quite a bit especially on these eight wide trailers. But anytime we do tack rooms, we like to put some emphasis on having these steps. You can see we have about an eight inch difference between the bottom of the door frame to the top of that step. So even if this trailer's lower, it's just a lot easier making that transition from ground level into your tack room. You have a combo lock on here. We've got combo locks incorporated throughout. So you don't, as long as you don't lock this, as long as you give somebody the code, they can run out to the trailer and grab something. So again, they don't have to have keys. You know, where are they? Um, oh, we left them in the truck. Then you got to go to the truck. It's just simple to send somebody out there to grab that. Fold up step with that gas shock. So as you can see, really easy to operate. This has the wraparound nose on it. So you have this uh, piece here that just kind of cleans up the trailer, gives it a sleeker look, in my opinion. And on these Cimarron's, they have a little bit longer nose as it is. These, these are eight, two noses. When you get into an enclosed nose, they actually go nine foot. Uh, they can even go nine, six on some of them. Uh, if we're looking for some additional storage or storing more items underneath uh, that area, but you can do the enclosed front ends. It'll have that wraparound style on those. So it's a, it, it again, it dresses this trailer up really nicely. One of the other things that they've done is button lights for marker lights. They're small, they put off a lot of light, not a big power draw. That became standard on the 22 models. And as you can see, this one here, we added quite a few extra. I mean, this is a nice trailer, let's light it up. It looks really good at night. So white is standard, the white sheeting. You can go to silver metallic, charcoal metallic, champagne, black, uh, there's a lot of different color options you can go with. There are up charges to those. Uh, again, white is standard, but again, if you want a, a custom color, they can do that. Um, but as you can see, I mean, you've got a lot of options there. Now behind that front tack room that we just stepped in there is going to be this room behind it. This is a hay room. So on this type of a trailer, one thing we always hear and get feedback from customers on is, you know, if it has a hay rack or a pot is, well, how do I get that hay up there? How do I get it down? Well, obviously getting down is a little bit easier. You have gravity working for yourselves. So you can actually toss the bales down, but you know, you have the ability to lose maybe some, uh, if you're running alfalfa bells, you know, maybe losing some of those flakes in there when you drop them to the ground. But these hay rooms, we're incorporating these quite a bit because now look, we can just fill this up. We don't have to figure out how to get it up there with a tractor or tossing a bale up to somebody. Uh, these, these setups here, typically on an, about an average size bale, you can put 15 bales of hay in this hay room. So you can get quite a bit of hay actually in this room. And again, it's all right here. 
Same thing, step going into it. There's that gray rubber floor that I showed you in that front dressing room a second ago. So it's on the floor, so really easy cleanup. The other thing we did was we put the kick mat, the rubber mat, all the way around. So that way it protects those walls a little bit better. Um, you've got a light in here as well. So you have lights kind of throughout the trailer. Uh, but again, having the ability to not have to figure out how to get hay up to the roof is definitely something that customers really appreciate and really like on this. We put the rubber mat even on the door for you. So again, it protects it all the way around and then another combo lock on it. Now, with all that being said, if you wanted to add a hay rack or a pod, you easily could to this trailer. And one of the main reasons why is the running gear we have underneath this trailer. Now, as you notice, we've got, th we've got a triple axle, like I mentioned earlier. This is also a spread axle trailer. So with it being spread axle, what we get is we get you know less weight on the nose just because it helps take away some of that because we spread that, that weight out. Uh, one, by having three axles, but on top of that, you spread them. So there's a 12 inch spread between each one of them. You also have 19 five inch wheels, 18, ply tires underneath here. So you want to talk about serious running gear. So we have three 8Ks, we have 19 five wheels, we have 18 ply tires, and on top of that we have air ride suspension. That air ride is a massive game changer when it comes to these trailers. Look, we're spending a lot of money on these animals, a lot of time training them, a lot of, a lot of money on the road. So with that being said, why not protect that investment and put those horses on air ride? It makes a massive difference in the ride of this trailer. Uh, in, on these newer ones, talk to customers that, that are pulling these newer trailers in these newer air ride systems. The old systems, if something happened to your air ride, a compressor, a line, a bag, you couldn't move the trailer. This is actually rubber torsion axles with a shock kit. So if something happens, it literally sets down on rubber torsion axles and you can still get down the road, get to where you need to, and then get that addressed. But it's the ride that is the most important thing. Dexter did some testing, but axles on a trailer is the worst part of a ride. The easiest way to explain it is, if you've ever sat the, at the back of a school bus, that's the fun place to ride when you're a kid because all the bumps and railroad crossings and things like that will literally shoot you out of your seat. So same thing on a trailer. Dexter showed it took away 52% of the road shock behind the axles by having the air ride. We've heard stories of somebody leaving a half a cup of coffee, sitting on a, um, you know, up in a tack room and then traveling five to 600 miles and when you get there, they still have half a cup of coffee, it didn't move. Uh, it, it really does make a massive difference. And you think about the shocks that it's putting on the joints on some of these rough roads that we deal with today. And by having that air ride, you look back in your, in your driver's seat, look in that mirror and you'll hit a bump in the truck and feel it. And you look back there and this trailer just floats. And then by having that triple axle, the way it walks and transitions from one bump or a pothole and the other two are on, on solid surface. And by the time they get to it, They've already transferred out of that to the next axle. So it really does help the way this trailer rides immensely. And when we get to the other side, there's one more piece to this that I want to talk about, but we'll save that to when we get to the driver's side of this trailer. So looking here on tail side, you have drop windows every other, and then bus windows every other. Now, these are a little bit smaller bus windows just because of the offset we're dealing with and the stall width. You know, if, if you go standard, you know, width and offsets, you might get a little bit bigger uh, bus window on this, but by incorporating the drops, you still get a ton of airflow throughout this trailer uh, by having the drops. One other thing, this is a very small option that we do to these trailers, but it's this amber turn signal. That works as an indicator. When you turn your blinker on, it'll blink as well. When you hit your brakes, it'll indicate, and then it works as almost like another marker light as you're traveling down the road itself. These are big trailers. 
a lot of people don't pay attention. So if somebody's right at the back of your trailer and you have your blinker on, they don't know your blinker's on, but by having that, it's gonna catch their eye and they're gonna know, hey, I'm trying to get over and maybe they'll let you over or probably not. That's usually the case. But it's a small feature that we really like doing on bigger trailers, our living quarters, you know, eight foot wides, uh, quite a bit of, of trailers, we actually like to go ahead and put that on. Now at the back here, again, eight foot wide on this trailer, a lot of storage that I'll show you when we get to driver's side. So we have one big door that opens up. We have a rear ramp that folds over it. Ramps can always be added on the trailers after the fact. Uh, if, you're, if you don't want a ramp, like this one was optioned with, that could actually be cut off and we could put a rubber bumper across the back of this trailer. But like I mentioned, when you have this air ride on, again, it picks up the box of the trailer. So it puts a little bit more uh, of an angle and makes this ramp a little bit steeper. So again, loading and unloading horses, go ahead and drop your air ride. And again, it'll set down, making it an easier transition going in and out. Now let's get in here to this stall area because we got a lot in here as well. So because of the offset length of the trailer, this back divider here is actually telescoping. As you see, when it opens up fully, it sticks out the back of the trailer. But maybe there's an instance where we want it to be open and shut the rear doors. So that does telescope down. These are airflow dividers, airflow on the head grills as well. It is easier if you don't want airflow head grills, it's easier for us to have it option that way and then put a, a sheet of aluminum over it and then weld it to that rather than trying to cut out a solid and replacing it with an airflow. But this one here with air flows all the way through, again, a lot of air movement throughout this trailer, especially when you're traveling. Think about, you know, really hot days where it's real stuffy, no breeze, anything like that. It just feels miserable and a little bit of a breeze kicks up and it makes you feel a lot better. So same thing here. I'll show you the drops when we get to the head side. We've got these drops on tail side. We've got bus windows, every other as well. Two-way roof vents on the roof, one above every horse, so you have eight of them in here. You can create a lot of airflow throughout this trailer. There's no doubt about that. You also have this insulated roof that is standard on every single Cimarron. One, it's really strong and durable. It can handle about 150 pounds per square foot. It's a half inch thick reinforced R3 thermal value. And what that means is it's gonna actually keep this stallery about 20% cooler compared to aluminum sheeted roofs. So all this airflow and an insulated roof, again, this will keep horses nice and comfortable in this trailer as far as that's concerned. Up here at the front, the first two dividers are full stud dividers. If you wanted to add pads, we could it, we could go in and do that after the fact. Uh, we could option them that way when we build the trailer, but there's some items like that that you can always do after the fact. You know, this one has rubber mats. Maybe you want worm flooring. We could do that after the fact as well. Or if we're building you a trailer, we just make that note right off the bat and it's just done when it shows up. As you can see, shutting these dividers is very simple, very easy. And that's because they have this paddle latch that's actually recessed in there and it is a slam latch. This is a cast aluminum piece that is powder coated with this heavy UHMW plastic. So we don't have metal to metal contact when we shut these dividers creating more noise. But everything has a radius, everything's smooth. Cimarron puts a lot of emphasis on animal safety first and foremost. And for you, it's real simple to just push these shut and they automatically lock into place and then releasing them. As you can see, they actually want to suck towards the driver's side of this trailer. It's because of these big springs that Cimarron uses at the bottom of the dividers. This trailer is actually slanted towards passenger side, but yet these uh, springs are still trying to pull them towards the driver's side of the trailer. So loading and unloading, you're not having to, okay, well now I got to hold the divider that's trying to shut on me. Uh, you know, again, loading and unloading that horse that are auto, they just want to pull that direction. So a lot easier to use, a lot more user friendly. You see the kick mats. 
Everything again has, has a radius, so they even taper the fenders for you. They taper them up, they taper them here at the back. There's no 90 degrees as far as that's concerned. And then with it being seven four tall and eight foot wide, even with the mangers, you know, these are still big stalls. You have that extra height. Uh, you actually gain a little bit in the middle uh, just because of the roof bow. So even though it's seven four, it's gonna feel more like a seven five, almost seven six trailer dead center of the trailer itself. So you have these LED lights all the way around the trailer. You have some on each side. You have them at the rear. Obviously your stall lights on the inside as well. Everything's on an individual switch right back here. So I can turn one on or the other. And then Cimarron does a really good job with the springs that they use for this rear ramp. So it's easy to pick up. You can see those three big springs there at the bottom. As it gets towards the trailer, it actually wants to suck in towards it. So once you get past the braking point, it naturally wants to go towards the trailer itself. Now, one other thing that we've been incorporating on a lot of these bigger trailers is backup lights. We understand the, the lengths of these trailers, you know, your backup lights on your truck are basically useless at that point. So again, it's another small, upgrade and feature that we do just like those amber turn signals you know once you hit it in reverse you know those are those will light up so you can kind of see what you got going on behind you again the length of these trailers um, we're trying to come up with different things like that small options just to make them easier we understand you're going to be getting home late at night or getting to a show late so why not have a couple of those little things like that on this trailer <clears throat> Here's a look at driver's side. We have all the drop windows down. They have these big, massive drop windows. A lot of framework to these. Between the window and the edge is all framework. So they're really stout. You also have your jail bars that fold down. We can get you some nets from Cimarron if you want those that'll actually go over the jail bar itself. They're welded hinges with grease certs, so a lot easier to maintain as well. You know, if you start hearing uh, a hinge maybe get a little bit squeaky, you can actually put grease to it, maintain it yourself, open and close. It has this brass in the inside here, this actual rod, and it actually is grooved. So when you put grease to it, it wants to feed that grease throughout the entire hinge itself. A lot of them are welded, but there's no way for you to put grease to them. I mean, you're literally trying to get something squirted right in that little gap that they might have. And, and again, what you're trying to do is you're trying to get it throughout that whole hinge and it just doesn't work as well. But this setup, there's a grease zert on each end of it and then that rod. So again, it wants to feed it throughout that, that entire hinge. Nice solid seal to them. Big, thick weather stripping. Sometimes customers will come to the lot and go to a tack door or drop window and they say, oh, it's, it's actually locked. Well, it's, it's such a tight seal that you almost have to take a little pressure off. So when you go to a tack door, I usually put my thumb on it and just kind of push, releases that pressure and the door opens right up. One of the other things that they've been doing is they actually came up with a piece that goes across each door and each drop window and that's to keep that moisture away. So as if snow melts or rain comes off this trailer, especially when we get to the cold months where it'll freeze. I mean, here in Colorado, we have 300 days of sunshine. So when snow melts, you know, we're still gonna get below freezing at night. So what we don't want is we don't want that moisture trying to get into these doors and these seals and freeze up on you. So that drip rail is trying to keep that moisture away and that's not just a, a piece of aluminum that they add after you know this whole frame's built that's actually an extruded piece so they have a die specifically for that one piece right there so it is built specifically for the trailer and for these reasons above drop windows above doors again trying to keep that moisture away mangers as well so again we have mangers throughout this trailer We'll go to the back first because you get this big one back here. 
there's items that are a little bit maybe harder to get to or a little bit heavier you know that's a good candidate for that one there there's a total of five manger doors on this trailer. The next two are gonna be above your wheel wells. So they're gonna be a little bit narrower and then you get a little bit bigger as you work forward. And the last one's actually below uh, that first drop window. Again, we've got that door open, uh, but again, a lot of storage on this. We understand you're gonna be taking a lot of items with you to these shows, whether it's feed buckets, lawn chairs, tire changing equipment, anything like that, it's good to have storage and have the ability to go ahead and put items like that on this trailer. Now here is the tack room, this big massive trainer tack. As you can see, we have dual doors, dual steps on it going into it. Each door is the same as far as carpeting, a row of bridle hooks, brush tray on the door itself, the entire thing's carpeted. So on each wall and again on these doors, everything's carpeted. On the back partition wall, the front partition wall, we incorporated two rows of hooks. So again, a lot of those items that you wanna hang up. And then as you can see, we have three separate recess posts with saddle pads on them. There's four pads per. You can go in and add more. You can adjust the spacing of these just by simply loosening the bolts at the back, sliding it where you want and tightening them back up. But if you wanted to add more, you could. You could remove a section if you wanted to, if you're not needing to haul like, you know, 12 saddles in this instance, and you want to take out the back four for a little bit more storage, you could do that. And then you've got two recess posts with 10 blanket pole racks. So you want to talk about a lot of storage and a lot of items that you can carry in this tack room and here it is. And by having these steps again, I mean, look where I'm at on the ground and there would be that top saddle. Now, if I step up, it's right here. A lot easier, a lot of, uh, better to just manage getting those saddles on and off of those pads. This right hand door shuts first because it's got an internal locking two point high and low. And then the left hand door closes on it. You fold up your steps. And once again, a combo lock on this one here. So again, you can set those. Very simple to get in and out of, uh, you know, these tack rooms again, without having the keys if you don't need to. There's that first manger door as well on those uh, behind that drop that I had down. But again, a good look at this trailer. Again, this is a big air ride trailer. Now, there's one more piece to this about this air ride. <clears throat> Let's talk about that. So turning triple axles is always a little bit more difficult, especially in real tight areas. Uh, you know, especially on asphalt, you know, dirt or gravel is a little bit more forgiving that can kind of slide a little bit. But triple axles, when you really try to crank those trailers around, it puts a lot more stress on the axle itself, the hubs, the sidewalls of the tires. I mean, you can look back there and, and all of them are actually trying to fight each other as you're turning, you know, in, in again, really tight quarters. So what we've done is, again, we've got this triple axle air ride. This is something we do exclusively here at, Sim at uh, Trans West. You know, here's our pivot point right now. You know, it's the middle of that center axle. So we put an air dump on this back axle, which then moves this pivot point from here to here. And then this trailer will turn like a tandem. And what it is, is we actually have this remote. So it's a little key fob. So you can be sitting in your driver's seat and you get into this show and you say, boy, I got to crank this trailer around to get backed up to where I need to. And all I have to do is hit a button and it's actually releasing air from this, these back bags on this trailer right now. So it's actually gonna drop it a touch right here. It's shifting that weight to those first two. We'll probably, back here we probably can't hear it, but the compressor will probably kick on because it's compensating for that weight moving forward to those two axles. And now I can turn this trailer around like a tandem. Now it doesn't physically pick this wheel and tire up off the ground, 
But what it does is it makes it to where it almost skates. And we've done some other videos um, showing how tightly we can turn. I mean, our GM runs a, a four horse head to head that's this floor length. And he can actually bring it in this little section right here in a one ton dually four door. And he can turn that trailer completely around and come from the north, coming south, flip around and go straight north out of here. And it doesn't put all that stress that we see normally on these triple axles. So we get the benefit of riding like a triple axle, benefit of riding on air ride, but then we've got the ability to turn this like a tandem. Now, I do have a little disclaimer on these. You have to be very careful of this remote. It needs to be somewhere where it can't be bumped. I'll show you an indicator light we put on this. But what we don't want is to accidentally leave this on or hit it to where now we're running on these two axles. This back one's just kind of floating because when you hit your brakes and you hit them hard, that is the quickest way to flat spot a set of tires because it doesn't have that resistance. So this is more of your instances like in here where we get into a show or you get home or you get somewhere where you have to crank that trailer around. Maybe it's a, a gas station that you had to get into to fuel up, but it's really tight getting out of it. That's where this comes into play. And again, it's just something to be cautious of because what we don't want is we don't want it to cause a problem just by accidentally bumping this remote. But man, you wanna talk about now, again, moving that pivot point forward, turning this trailer around and not putting all that stress on there. And again, getting all the benefits of the way a triple axle rides. So again, we have this remote so you can actually sit in the driver's seat look in your mirror and it's actually got an indicator light right here right now that light is off because i went ahead and turned it off so it put air back to that axle but again all i have to do is hit on this indicator so i can look in the mirror and say okay my air dump is on you just if you you might be able to hear that that compressor kicked on because again it's shifting that weight forward to those first two bags so it's compensating for those so again now i know that that's on and then when i want to turn it off all i have to do is hit that button and i'll shift that air back and put air to that rear axle simple as that again a very simple uh, system that we do but that's something we do here exclusively at transwest on our triple axles we do it quite a bit on these bigger trainer trailers we do it on our uh, big living quarters trailers, even on some, some of our uh, show livestock trailers that, air, that run air ride. Um, there is definitely a lot of benefit to that. And again, just making it a lot more user friendly getting in and out of these tight situations that we can get into. So again, I mean, this trailer has a lot on it. Very well set up. Again, I, I challenge somebody to find better running gear than what's underneath this trailer for what it is and how it's set up. Again, three 8K axles, those 18 ply tires, those 19 half inch wheels, air ride suspension. You know, I can't say much more about that the way this trailer is set up. So I'm gonna give you the stock number on this trailer. Again, unfortunately it is sold, but you can reference this. You can call in and say, I want that exact trailer or I want that trailer, but I want it in silver, or maybe there's some other options that you want to tweak, we can do that. It is 5N220666. It is a 2023 Cimarron North Star 8-horse gooseneck. We take trade-ins. We buy trailers as well. If you have something sitting around you want to turn into cash, we can help you out there. But we can completely customize these Cimarrons. I use the example of they're like a fingerprint. Every one of them is a little bit different. Everyone's a little bit unique but we can build them to how you want the trailer set up. So give us a call. Anyone on our sales team can help you out. That number is 303-684-3400. We appreciate you tuning in. Have a good day.